clutching that towel to his eye. Yeah, it looked like Deontay Christmas got a piece of it. They actually have now called that a two. They're saying that the right foot of Rob Ferguson was on the line. Tyndale for three, and the answer, and it's good. Fashion is experience. He reminds me a lot of Rap Curry, who was a terrific point guard when I coached at St. Joseph's. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, it really makes a difference at that position. Inge on the pass from Tyndale. Darren Govins threes with different personalities on this possession. Well, right now, if the Hawks can just get a couple minutes out of these guys like DJ Rivera, Nobody, it really could have come down to how many at-large bids is the conference going to earn? Well, 10 teams have at least 15 wins in the Atlantic 10. It's the most ever in conference history. I think that says a lot. I, I think it says that there's a lot of really good teams, but it, I'm not sure if there's enough teams that are going to distinguish itself on a national level to earn, you know, maybe three or four at-large bids. Well, it's an eight-point lead for St. Joseph's, 52-44. Lavoy Allen has the last eight points for the Owls. The Hawks, meanwhile, have missed their last five shots, and here's a turnover. Tyndale to the basket, finger roll, gets the roll. The clock is at 10. Calathis, baseline to the basket, high banking shot, no good. Allen with the rebounds. St. Joseph's won for its last 11 from the floor. Clark for three. It's good. Huge basket by Chris in the game, and they had a terrific first half. Govins with a tough drive. Off balance. Brooks with the rebound. 9-0 run for Temple. Let's see if they can add to it. Tyndale right to the basket. He just sped right by everyone. We've seen him make some big shots against Ohio University, against Fordham. He struggled in the first half. Ten points before those two made free throws. He and Christmas were tied with 10 points, as you saw. And now Calathis with 12. Hawks lead it by three. Temple has never led in this game. Almost backing in against Nibbins. Gets the roll, and he's fouled. And half. Oh, we head to the one-minute mark here in the second half. The Hawks hanging on to a one-point lead. To Sheet Carr, high post left side. Finds Calathis. Under a minute to play. Shot clock under 10. Calathis puts it on the floor. Peppers, Mark Tyndale, can't get the shot to go. They have a certain number of wins. You talk to the St. Joe folks. They have a totally different record. But by some measurement, this is the 145th meeting of these two schools. Chris Clark with the ball. The shot clock heads to 10 seconds. Tyndale, one-on-one -on -one with Williamson, gets to the hook. Temple has its first lead of the night. And a great defender on Tyndale. The inbounds pass goes to Carr. Shot clock is off. Game clock under 20. To Sheet Carr against Ryan Brooks. Calathis now picked up by Brooks. Ten seconds to play. Calathis leans to the hook, can't get it to go. Ball is loose. Carr with the soft jumper, no good. Ferguson with the putback, it's no good. Temple in second place in the Atlantic 10. You can just watch what's happening to see the meaning of this game. I mean, for the Temple Owls, this is a breakthrough. They now have won 10 of their last 14 games, and you get the feeling that they have just won an NCAA tournament game. That's how meaningful this win has been for the Temple Owls here tonight. Back-to-back -to -back endings between these two schools. The last time it was Pat Calathis who won it with a shot made at 3.9 seconds to go in the second half. Well, tonight, it was really Mark Tyndale, whose missed shot could have given the Owls the win the last time at the Leah Corps Center. He did not miss in the second half. What an ending for the Temple Owls here at the Palestra in Philadelphia. And what an ending for Mark Tyndale in his senior season. He still has some games to play, but what an ending against St. Joseph. How memorable is it going to be for Mark Tyndale, especially if he had any thoughts of that missed free throw? But again, here's the last 10 seconds. Pacalathus takes an off-balance shot. The Hawks battle for an offensive rebound. Tashid Carr has a pretty decent look, but I think almost changed the shot a little bit. 
and the Temple Owls come up with that loose ball, and you can see the celebration now at center court. This is the Philadelphia version of March Madness, Tom. St. Joseph's two for their last 18 to finish off this game. Well, the fans for both schools know the significance. Bragging rights for at least the time being to Temple. We'll be back. Hey, Hoops fans, we've got all the action you can handle when the Atlantic 10 Men's Basketball Championship returns to Boardwalk Hall March 12th through 15th. Tickets are on sale at the box office, Ticketmaster.com, or by calling 800-736-1420. And while you're at the A-10, check out Fan Zone, presented by the Nike Factory Store at Atlantic City Outlets The Walk. It's free for ticket holders Thursday through Saturday. Go to AtlanticCityNJ.com for details. Atlantic City, always turned on.